Welcome to Applied Bionomics. This is our Micromus rearing system. This is known as the Brown Lacewing. It was a product that was developed by Dave Gillespie in British Columbia when he was doing a survey for parasitoids that were capable of parasitizing the foxglove aphid. Um, he found three parasitoids, but we weren't too interested in the parasitoids, but he also found this predatory bug. And what's really interesting about the brown lacewing is that unlike the green lacewing, the brown lacewing's adult stages are also predatory. And what he was finding was whenever he found a foxglove infestation, uh, he could find these brown lacewing associated with it. So we were very interested in pursuing this product as a potential resource for managing the foxglove aphid, which is extremely damaging aphid in a lot of the ornamental industries. One of the things that we discovered, uh, which was a bit difficult, was that the species Micromus variegatus uh, is considered a European species, even though it was found here in British Columbia. Because of that, the USDA has uh, been unhappy to consider it uh, for import into the U.S., at least until we can find evidence of its existence in the U.S. Uh, I'm sure it does, because uh, where we found it was only about uh, 150 yards away from the U.S. border. So for sure it's there, but somebody has to find it. In the meantime, we started playing with this. We found this uh, has a lot of really interesting attitudes. It eats almost everything. Our rearing system is still, as you can see, in the cage form, which is basically how all insect rearing systems start. And we still really haven't figured out how to deal with it. We've made it intentionally messy because what we found is that the cannibalism is quite high and the larvae actually need to be able to hide from each other in order to uh, survive. So uh, we, uh, we have a very messy cage. We throw in tobacco plants that are either covered in aphids and or whitefly. Uh, they eat all of the sucking insects. We've also used them successfully against some mealybugs in some applications. I won't say it cures mealybugs, but it does eat mealybugs and possibly down the road we'll be able to develop a control system for that. Uh, but what we have been able to do is introduce these products very, very early in the season because the other really interesting thing about its life cycle is that it can actually complete its life cycle at 4 degrees Celsius. So this product is an extremely low temperature performer working well into the low 40 Fahrenheit temperature range, which makes it very attractive for perennial producers, overwintering producers and biannual producers where they have fairly significant aphid problems during the wintertime. We sell them as adults. We aspirate each one individually. And because the adults can target the hot spots and the pests, we get a very, very effective level of control. We're still playing with this product and there are some interesting techniques. Uh, you can actually get a, a bit of an idea of what they look like. Uh, I've got a couple here. We've left a cage open. It's just very much like a green lacewing, only it's brown. You can see a very uh, variegated leaf on it. Uh, on our website, we've got some better photographs. Uh, but this is a very, very interesting predator that has a lot of potential. Um, green lacewing, we've got nothing against the green lacewing. But the problem is the adults don't target the pests. The adults tend to feed on just pollen and nectar. And so it becomes kind of a random thing. So unless you develop a product like we did with uh, Abida back in Ontario, like eggs on a string, uh, you really have to be specific where you put your, uh, your green lace wing. Whereas these guys, you can just let them go in a greenhouse and they'll find the pests way better than you can.